Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to look at Euler's approach to the derivative. And this is following a paper in the College Math Journal. You can find it here. Okay, so what's the main idea? Well, everyone is going to think that the main idea here, or what underpins this whole thing, is a little bit sketchy. And that's because it is. In fact, like previous generations of mathematicians, we're not as interested in the rigor that we are now. Okay, so anyway, what was the idea here? Okay, so the idea was that the quotient of zero by itself could be equal to a for any real number a. And perhaps I don't really just mean real numbers, but also so-called extended real numbers, which include plus and minus infinity. So of course, this doesn't make any sense in like normal or modern language. We would approach this kind of thing with limits. Anytime you would see a zero over zero, you would think that there's probably some sort of limiting procedure behind that. Like perhaps we've got a quotient of functions and we're taking a limit and both functions go off to zero or a quotient of sequences or something like this. Okay. But anyway, Euler's idea was that we could take the quotient of zero by itself, but we didn't just get a single number, we got every possible number. Okay, and then he said, okay, well, if zero divided by zero could be equal to any real number a, then what I should do is use different symbols for the numerator and the denominator. And what would those symbols be? Well, let's introduce some notation. Let's set dx equal to zero, but notice that that means that a times dx is also equal to zero. So we might think about dx as being some sort of differential or some sort of infinitesimal, but Euler thought of it as just another way of writing zero down. Like perhaps there are like infinitely many types of zero. Okay, but then now we could take this quotient zero over zero and rewrite it as a times dx over dx, which clearly simplifies to the number a. Okay, so that's like a way to get started here. And then where could we go from this point? Well, let's notice that one is equal to one plus zero, but I'll write zero as dx. But then multiplying this right-hand side by the number one in the form of dx over dx will give us dx plus dx squared over dx. So that's another way of writing the number one. But then we could maybe cross multiply by dx and we'll see that dx is equal to dx plus dx squared. And then through a similar calculation to this, we could show that dx is in fact equal to dx plus dx to the nth power. So what that means is we can essentially disregard the higher powers of this dx object. And that's what Euler did. And that actually makes a lot of our calculations work. So maybe our first goal here should be to reproduce a really simple derivative rule, like perhaps the power rule using this formalism. So let's do that. Okay, so let's start by setting y equal to x to the n. And now we wanna calculate dy. So we can think about that as like the derivative of y or like the differential of this function defined by y equals x to the n. But notice dy is just another name for zero, but then zero can be rewritten as x to the n minus x to the n. So I think that's pretty clear. But then this first x to the n can be written as x plus dx raised to the n power. And that's because dx is simply equal to zero. So there's the idea, we expanded out zero in this like fancy way. And of course like, and of course you couldn't really do this without some sort of intuition. And I think the intuition for taking the expansion of dy to this object over here, this x plus dx to the n minus x to the n, is born out of the fact that the derivative is still supposed to be some sort of limited version or some sort of infinitesimal version of a slope of a secant line. And that's kind of what looks like 
is going on here. Okay, so anyway, now let's expand this x plus dx to the n using the binomial theorem. So that'll leave us with x to the n plus n times x to the n minus 1 times dx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 times x to the n minus 2 times dx squared plus some more terms. And then after all of those terms, or maybe at the end of all of those terms, will be a dx to the n power, and then we subtract x to the n. Okay, but we get some cancellation here. Notice that this x to the n will cancel with this x to the n, and then by our observation up here, or maybe by things that are very similar to the observation up here, we can disregard all of these. So disregard them by like taking them to zero. And notice we're left with exactly what we want. We have n x to the n minus one dx. But that's exactly the power rule. So if you zero in on starting here and ending here, that's the power rule that you learned at the beginning of a calculus class. Okay, let's see if we can do some more things using this method. Hey, if you're looking for a free and easy way to learn more about calculus and math history, you should check out today's sponsor, brilliant.org. While watching my videos is a great place to start, you get more out of learning by doing. And that's why I highly recommend you sharpen your skills with Brilliant. Keep your love for learning alive with Brilliant's interactive lessons, perfect for ages 10 to 110. You will be able to master whole topics gradually in as little as 15 minutes per day and learn anywhere, anytime, on your phone, tablet, or computer. And Brilliant will support you every step of the way. Brilliant makes learning more like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. No matter what skill level you're at, Brilliant can help you improve. Not sure where to start? Well, keeping in the theme of today's video, you could check out their calculus class or their great math history class. But we're scientists here, so don't take my word for it. You should test it for yourself. Treat yourself to a unique hands-on experience by going to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn for a 30-day free trial and the first 200 people people will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Now let's see if we can reproduce the product rule and the quotient rule using these infinitesimals, or in other words, using these versions of zero, which is how Euler thought about it. So if we start with d of f g, notice that's again equal to zero. But zero can now be expanded as fg minus fg. Okay, but then we can include some more zeros in here and write this as f plus df times g plus dg. So again, we're just adding zero to f and adding zero to g, but we're adding those new versions of zero. And then of course here we have to subtract f times g. But then if we multiply out those two binomials and then subtract the fg, we get, well, what do we get? Well, we're going to get fdg plus gdf plus dfdg. But notice that dfdg is a product of two things that are zero. So that's kind of like a smaller version of zero. So we would disregard that leaving us with this dfg is equal to, well, exactly what it should be, keeping the product rule in mind. Okay, so now let's look at the quotient rule. So let's do d of f over g. Well, again, this is a version of zero, but we'll write it as f over g minus f over g, that version of zero. And then we'll manipulate it again, keeping in mind that we had this up here. So here we have f, plus df over g plus dg, dg minus f over g. Okay, nice. But now let's manipulate this first term. So I'm gonna write this as f plus df over g times one over one plus dg over g, and then we still have to subtract f over g. Okay, so we've got something that looks like that. But now we'll do a geometric series expansion on this one over one plus dg over g term. 
So what will that leave us with? Over G plus DF over G. So that's just by rewriting that. And then that's all multiplied into one minus DG over G plus DG over G quantity squared, and then infinitely more terms, because again, we're expanding this as a geometric series. And then from that, we subtract F over G. But now, just as we did before, the top bit here is equal to zero. Well, what we did in that binomial expansion. And that's because those all have things that are dg squared and above. And so that means we're only keeping these first two terms. So if we multiply this through to those first two terms, and then remember to subtract this off, what will we have? Well, we'll have something like this. G times DF minus F times DG, and then plus DF DG all over G squared. But then if we take this DF times DG and just write it as zero, because it's the product of two smaller zeros, then again, we've gotten the quotient rule as expected. Okay, so now let's finish this off by seeing if we can reproduce the derivative of a transcendental function. And the transcendental function that we'll work with is the natural log function. So I've set y equal to the natural log of x. And now let's write dy as, well, it's equal to zero, but it's also equal to natural log of x minus natural log of x, which can be written as natural log of x plus dx minus natural log of x by adding a zero into that natural log in the form of dx, of course. But now we can use logarithm rules to rewrite this as the natural log of x plus dx over x, which simplifies to one plus dx over x. And then we'll use a series expansion of the natural log, which may seem a bit circular, but the series expansion of natural log was known before calculus. So it's like actually kind of okay. And so we can rewrite this as dx over x minus one half times dx over x squared plus one third times dx over x cubed and so on and so forth. But now we're gonna do our old favorite trick for all of this, and that is disregard the higher powers of dx. So think of these as zero, and notice we're left with dx over x, which of course is exactly what we would expect for the derivative of the natural log. Let's maybe end this video by doing a little bit of a discussion of why this is not quite as sketchy as it may seem. Okay, so let's see why this isn't quite as sketchy as it might seem. So let's say we wanna find the derivative or really the differential of a function y equals f of x. And so you'll start by writing down dy, that's our goal, but that's equal to zero because all differentials are versions of zero. So now how, we, how do we wanna rewrite that version of zero? Well, we've been doing it as this f of x minus f of x and then rewriting that as f of x plus dx minus f of x. Of course, this x plus dx is simply x by our reasoning that all differentiables are versions of zero. But why is this the right version of zero? Well, behind all of this is the fact that the derivative is supposed to give you the slope of the tangent. So if you want to get the slope of the tangent, you need to expand this differential, aka version of zero, in a way that works towards that overall goal. And then of course, in all of our examples, we've simplified to something nice afterwards. The possibilities of that happening really depend on the function. And so here's a bit of a picture of what's going on here. So I've got my graph f of x in this light green color. I've got a tangent line in yellow. And this tangent line is happening at some point x. And then here we've zoomed in and we've like zoomed in to the infinitely close level. And so zooming into the infinitely close level, we see X here and then zero units away, we have this X plus DX. And so that's exactly what we've done. We've added zero, it just like looks a little further away. So I think like, even though Euler thought of this, as versions of zero, these differentials as versions of zero, this is actually 
in parallel to the calculus of infinitesimals that others at the time looked at. So thanks for sticking around. If you haven't subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. It would really help us out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.